15 love. Rublev has 19 wins on the year and two titles. Only Novak Djokovic had more. by Rublev's targets in the beginning here. Just kind of keeping the ball down the middle of the half. You know, that's not really where you want to be aiming as this match goes on. But always in the beginning, it's always better to just kind of feel out your opponent a little bit, not give the match away with errors too early. Already, what a striking difference, Taylor. 13, 15. Between these two. Yeah, and we'll have to see. I'm not surprised it's going to be this way on Rublev's serves. Um, because he's offensively minded, you know, and the server should be on offense more often than not. how Medvedev's going to play this service game. I mean, what we're going to see is a little bit of everything, but just to see what he hedges towards. Is he going to hedge towards, you know, just rallying like we're seeing in, in his return games, or is he going to try and take the offense away from Rublev? That's a first game round. Okay. It's pretty <laughs> solid hitting. <laughs> pretty solid. And they're not just rolling those balls in the court either. No. They are some solid shots. First game. I think it's a pretty good tactical move if I'm uh, Rublev just to kind of rally early on. I wouldn't like to make that a long term game strategy. I'd have to think when this match is all said and done, the longer the rally goes, the more we'll see those points start to swing in Medvedev's favor. But at the start of the match, like I said, the feel-out period, get your rhythm, get your range, that's okay. 35 shots before that last rally was decided. <laughs> wow. It's Fernando Vicente. He's Andre Rublev's coach. He runs an academy in Barcelona with another Spaniard turned coach, Galo Blanco. Rublev grew up idolizing Rafa Nadal. And Vicente says nobody works harder than this Daniel guy. Medvedev to serve. You can offer him hundreds of millions of dollars to stop playing tennis, and he wouldn't take it. Anything on a practice court. Let's for hours, service. Three hours. Service. 
you're wondering how Medvedev has been in the quarterfinals without dropping a set. Maybe this is some information that helps to describe that. He's leading all the singles quarterfinals in service games one and return games one. <laughs> He's won 48% of his return games. 94% of his service games. Wow. Though that that That's return number yeah. is just put that in perspective. The guys that are having the best years at 35 percent. 38 percent. He's he's breaking almost every other game. That's 15 all. That's an insane number. And I think 30 percent is a great number. And holding percentage, that's still unbelievable. 94 percent. But put that in perspective, you see, you know, the guys at the end of the year about 90 percent. You know, the only thing that I can see with that you all. What I would like to see someone try to do a lot to him is when they get him wide, pull him wide off the first ball, run and come in because he tends to hit the ball mid-court, shorter, in the middle of the rallies, but when he's on the run on defense, his depth becomes incredible, and the one way to take that away is to come and take it out of the air for the volley. But if you give him, if you give him that opportunity to that recovery shot, well, he's reset the point. How much does Rublev like to volley? Does well, he want to come in? Again, you know, talking about Berrettini, he's, he's evolved. You know, what Berrettini said is Rublev has evolved over the year. If you asked me that last year, I'd say he'd hate it. Game, Medvedev. One game all, first set. Medvedev played Berrettini in that last round. Again, they'd lost him the year before in the same round. They both hit 34 winners, okay? But Rublev hit 28 on four errors and Berrettini hit 44. Again, after the pandemic closed down everything, Rublev, who had such a sweet start to the season, said, it's an amazing feeling. I've been waiting for five months for this. We have some pros back at our academy, and they're in a similar position, maybe worse, because obviously if you're at this high ranking, you get an opportunity to play. The futures and the challenger tournaments, like they are very, very few and far between. Mm. Uh, I don't know, check between these two with this one. First, do this one, and I don't know if you see the difference. No, then I'm, then I'm sorry. You don't see, no? It's been interesting. The players have, have been. Asking to check the balls quite often this tournament, this year's U.S. Open. Fifteen love. Love. It's really awesome. And you just see how many quality shots it takes to get this ball by Medvedev. That's another reason why I think you got to come in as soon as you see your opponent running. It's a fortune to come forward. And my rule of thumb when I'm coaching my, uh, my students is the more your opponent has to run, the more you get to run to close off the angles of the net. So there's a correlation there. The more they have to run, the more likely you should come in. 
14. shot right down the middle, right at him. They're just going to be stepping in and hitting that thing. It doesn't give you much time to close into the net. Cincinnati, you know, and we saw it last year here at the Open. It's just he prefers to play defense. If that's not getting the job done, then he'll flip around and, and play amazing offense. And I think that is the better matchup for Daniel Medvedev is his offense to Ruba's defense. Game. Rublev. Rublev leads by two games to one. First set. This place was packed last year for the men's final. Daniel Medvedev had made himself famous with the fans of the Open. 15 love. Around. <laughs> or infamous, right? <laughs> or, or infamous. He had people booing for on him, and especially against the Feliciano Lopez match, and he had turned a bunch of them against him, but by the end, they loved this guy. They loved how talented he was in the fight he showed against Nadal. turning them around so much last year. 30 love. Daniel was very interested to see how the fans would take him this year. And of course there aren't any. He said the final ended up well like in romantic movies. Romantic American <laughs> movies. This guy is funny. <laughs> Interesting personality, isn't he? On the 13, court, I think he's 15. super feisty, super emotional, and, and you know, he kind of lets some unsavory things come out. But when he's being interviewed, he uh, seems so genuine and he's so charismatic, yes. I feel. Oh, I, lo I love this guy. I like Rublev as well. These are two very bright fellows. That's just such a thrill, isn't it? 14 Two games all, first set. Race each. And if you want to keep up on all the numbers, the scores, the draws, all kinds of features, just go to usopen.org. Catch up on everything that's been happening this week at the US Open. Fifteen love. Good job by Rublev taking that ball early. After the wide serve, wasn't the best approach shot. Still did a lot of damage because he, he just held his ground. He took time away. Very important to do that when you're off. The Just 
15 all. There to be able to take a defensive position with one shot. Get this forehand through the sideline, stretching out Rublev. And look at stepping up. A little bit earlier. Another angle. That's why you don't want to defend down the line typically. Obviously, when you have players that have phenomenal forehands, you want to defend to their backhand at all costs. But typically, against a balanced player like Medvedev, do not defend down the line because you're going to give him an opportunity to hit two angles to hurt you. And that is an awful lot of court to cover. If you're playing the doll or you're playing Federer, 13, where their 15. forehands are so much stronger than their backhands, and when you're in trouble, find the backhand at all costs. <laughs> Just don't let them win the point with the forehand. And that's what makes Djokovic such a problem. That's what yes. makes Del Potro, you know, when he won that U.S. Open, that's what made him such a problem. It's like when you're in trouble, where do you hit the ball? Yes. There's nowhere to go. Another long rally won by Rublev. 14. Well, shot tolerance, you think the other guy? Yeah. I'm with you 100%. He's being very disciplined in those longer rallies. And I like how sometimes mid rally you'll hear him up the ante with a big grunt, try to break open the point with even more power. Lean on it. But three games to two, first set. Back inside Ash Stadium, high quality already in this men's quarterfinal. Two old friends, two good friends. As Daniel says, I've known this guy for 16 years. <laughs> and as crazy as they got when they played against each other in the juniors. They never got angry at each other. Fifteen love. Dirty love. We talk so much about Daniel Medved's, Medvedev's defense and his shot selection. As Naomi Osaka played a great looking match last night. I mean, it's the kind of tennis you win majors with, taking out the American Shelby Rogers three and four. I can't get over how well this guy who's 6'6", six, six, how well he moves. Of underappreciated, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I Fort think the days of you know, kind of the the six five six six plus mover on a tennis court being cumbersome and lumbering around. I think it's gone. I think we have a handful of guys that are that tall that move exceptionally well. He's they're just their strides are so long, and I think that's an important thing in tennis. You have two different movements: an offensive type of movement where you hear those squeaky steps. But you also, have, and the squeaky steps is when you're supposed 15. to be. The ball's coming, you're just trying to stay on your toes to make those little adjustments.
but then you have the defensive moves, the moves where you've got to get somewhere and you've got to get somewhere fast, and those take big, long, powerful strides. What do they sound like? They sound like <laughs> boom, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. I guess. Mephidus. I don't know. I guess it depends how heavy you are. That's what it sounded like when I was moving. <laughs> Three games old, first set. Kind of brontosaurus -y. That's right, that's right, you know? <laughs> Three all. I'm not going to scare him with my defense. We'll scare him with the sound <laughs> of it. Fifteen loves. Second ace, I should say, for Rublev. Medvedev's had two as well. That one popped in at a snappy little 128. How beautifully he moved and hit from 15 that point. He's done that a handful of times already, that running forehand. And it seems like that's where Rublev is kind of starting the offense when the points are happening. See, that's where he's got to get to the net, Rublev. But having said that, even if he came to the net, I think that still passes him. But it's just the right time to come forward if you're Rublev. Let's for service. That's amazing, actually. I cannot believe he got that volley, that passing shot. But again, that's the 14, right play. And 15. I'm a believer that you just have to commit to it. It's not about whether you win this one point or not. It's about if, if you continue to make that play over and over, are you going to come out winning these points 60, 65% of the time? And I think in Rublev's case, yes, that's the way he wants to win these points. Game Rublev. Oh, this is good. Nibos, please. Opening set on serve. Two Rublev leads by four games to three. First set. Let's second service. Fifteen love. Thirty love. Very nice and forty love. We talk about that so often. There's we have a lot of returners that like to stand really, really far back. Dominic Team was one the other day. And it just makes the wide serve on both Wait, sides please. incredibly effective. Ah! 
Let's second service. Okay, Rublev. Rublev leads by five games to four. First set. Wednesday, September 9th. Again, that's where Rublev in the Love the rally. You just lean on it. Give it a little extra MPH and draw the air. Letting Medvedev know about it. Yes. Here it comes. There she blows. It's so impressive. 15 all. Years, you know, to be able to just keep that level of execution high. You know, getting a little fortunate. I think that backhand clipped the tape. Is from the sideline. Let's for service. Thirty fifteen. for service. Let for service. For Medvedev, he totally mishit that high forehand, but that's what you get. You know, you get lucky when you have a player on the other side of the court, whether it's Rublev or somebody else, doesn't really matter. When they give away a weak ball like that, you're forced to guess. So if Rublev hadn't a guess, he would have gotten that forehand. Okay, Medvedev. Five games all, first set. Fifteen love. He's in the bubble.
these points are absolutely incredible. Such a love. I mean, the level of execution feels like seven points out of ten are, are just big hitting, great accuracy. Somebody's moving from side to side all over the court. Pretty incredible so far. Forty has also been hitting those second serve returns pretty aggressive, and Rublev's done a great job to just kind of hold his ground and hit through that ball back at Medvedev. One of the worst things you can do is just lift up, back off, and pop something up in the air. That's exactly what Medvedev wants. That's exactly what a big returner wants. They want you to either miss or they want to pop up so they can just set up, take their time, and open up the court. Fourteen, fifteen. Djokovic esque, Medvedev esque. And that's kind of what I'm expecting on a consistent basis from this guy after watching him play so much. He just, whenever there's a really awkward reaching shot, the amount of depth that he gets is, it's not normal. <laughs> that's the best way to stymie an offense. are both taking such good care of their serve so far Deuce. into this opening set. Advantage, Rublev. Rublev. Rublev leads by six games to five. First set. Love it. Fifteen all. Thirty fifteen.
40, 15. Medvedev. Six games all, first set tiebreak. Like for example, he says uh, second serve. After his serve, it's blink. Do we replay the point or not? We just need, you just need to tell me. Yes or no? Yes. So I know. Yes. We replay the point. We replay the point, so then it will be a first serve. If it blinks in between first and second serves, and there's a hindrance. And during the point. Well, it, no. No. To be sure. If it plays during the point, you will replay the point or not, so I not. I will make the call. We don't replay the point. We don't replay the point. Both players receive one additional challenge. First point of the opening set. To one Iver. zero. Rublev. The power in this entire building went down for a time, and for a time the players just stopped play because the big scoreboards were flashing, and it's pretty annoying, pretty hard to concentrate. There's Dominic Team. We just saw a picture, also of Pablo Carreño Busa, the 20th seed. It was that Spaniard. There he is. There's Pablo Carreño Busa. Djokovic was defaulted in the match against that man. He's all the way into the semis against Vera. Forehand, Taylor, and it works. Yeah, Two zero. I would Rublev. say for the greater part of this first set, he's been trying to attack the, the Medvedev forehand, and Medvedev has been able to take control. He's been able to play defense and turn points around on that side. Now there is a drastic change from Rublev. Rublev is targeting that Medvedev backhand, seeing if he can break that side down. It's going to be 2-1. I was curious how that little Rublev. delay, because both players were kind of asking about what's going on here with the scoreboard flickering, just to see if there was any, any adverse effects from that. But uh, they have come out playing at a very, very high level. Picked up right where they left off. Three minutes. Rublev. Of disruption to the match. They tried to play some. There was talk about a, a let play. Medvedev is asking, you know, when do you decide to call let? And the umpire's base thing as ah, my discretion in these unusual circumstances. Four one for Rublev. Four one. Rublev. And I don't think this 4-1 right now is uh, anything other than Rublev playing better tennis right now than Medvedev. I mean, Medvedev, his service game at 5-6 was impressive. There's an ace in there, a couple forehand winners. Mr. Medvedev is challenging the call on the left far side line. The ball scored in. 
you got him, you may as well use him. He doesn't believe it's out either. He's on his way <laughs> to the next side. He's on oh. his way to. Yeah, he's going to have to wait for a verbal confirmation. He's in, in fact, and in the screens in the stadium, they do not get to see that. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we cannot show you the challenge on the screen, but Hawkeye have told us the ball was in. Another reminder, one. all the power in this building went away, and so those huge screens around Mr. Medvedev has three challenges remaining. Down. What else could happen? <laughs> Let's for service. As you can see, the, uh, the serve clock, that's not working either. It's all part of your 2020 experience. Playing as much tennis as both of these guys have for as long as they've had at a as high enough level they've they've seen and they've experienced enough other distractions that this is just another one that they should be able to deal with. They should be able to handle. Although losing this first set will make it slightly tougher. Double fault of the match. 5 3. Rublev. That was not only a double fault, that sounded like he barely hit the strings there. So we're going to take a little bit of extra time, refocus. Can't get distracted, can't get focused on. I'm about to serve, I'm about to get this first set. Let's for service. But Six, it gives three. Andre Rublev a Rublev. bunch of set points. And these two have played their whole lives in club matches, juniors, in the pros. It's Medvedev who's got a 2 nothing lead. If you count a challenger from years back, it's 3 nothing. As we're about to hit the one hour mark. out to me earlier Six, four. 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 that the reason they didn't play more often in the juniors was just because Medvedev has that two year age difference yep. on Rublev. He's 24. Six, Six five. five. Rublev. Mr. Rublev is challenging the call on the right near sideline. So the ball's got out. Now they're going to have to wait around for Hawkeye because it won't show up on the big screen team. And then you see Fernando Vicente, <laughs> Rublev's coach, saying it's good. <laughs> Let's see if he's right. No, he's not. That thing missed. Wow. That lead evaporates in this tie break. They switch sides. It's six all. Ladies and gentlemen, Hawkeye have confirmed the ball is called out. Can you move 
please. Six all. I like the old ladies and gentlemen thing from James Kjaldabong in the chair. There aren't that many ladies and gentlemen it's here. Left has three challenges. <laughs> but it's a nice... It's, Speaking it's a, of you and me, Mary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm no lady. <laughs> Probably not much of a gentleman either, <laughs> everybody would say. How far up was he in this tiebreak? Yeah, he was at 6'3". Two double, got a very fortunate forehand net court winner. That's a ridiculous shot from that far away. And now it's Medvedev with a set point. Medvedev. How did he strike the ball and hit that hit that spot? That's what I'm court? saying. His defense is unbelievable. And you can't blame Rublev for getting frustrated out there. It's been a tough, what has it been? Five points? First set point for Medvedev. Game okay, in first sets. Medvedev. By seven games to six. <laughs> you know, you don't want to stray from the past. We've been talking about how fiery these guys are, you know. Okay. What if they okay, played fine. a Pete Sampras, Bjorn Borg match out here? You wouldn't want that. That'd that make you a liar, Mary. Second set. Medvedev to seven. Fair enough. All right, let's see what happens now. 15 love. Don't you, love. you know how we talked about belief in your game and what you're doing? That just took a hit in the belief of what Rublev is doing out there. Obviously, the game plan was, you know, pound it in the backhand, get a short ball, take advantage. But now he's saying, I'm not getting any. His belief in the game plan is shaken. He's going to respond to that. And I think I'd like... If I was Rublev's coach, I would clarify his statement a little bit because I think Medvedev has given him short balls. They've landed just past the service line at times, but the quality of the ball has been still very high. He hasn't been giving him weak balls. 40, also 40. Now, the best defenders we can think of typically hit the ball deep. They hit it a little bit slower, and that the reason for that is to give yourself time to recover back to the center. With someone like okay. Medvedev, Medvedev playing aggressive from defensive positions, hitting it First fast game, and hitting it short, that actually presents an opportunity. He's cutting down on his own time to recover back to the center. So how you take advantage of that, you have to help him out, move up to the ball, don't wait for the ball, and redirect it. It's going to take two good shots off of two good balls to hurt Medvedev. If you can't do that, then I'm sorry, you're not, you're not going to be playing effective offense. Mr. Rublev is challenging the call on the left center service line. Okay, the board scoreboards, out. scoreboards aren't working right now, so Hawkeye's going to have to deliver the challenge results through the chair. And it was wide. Oh, 
Oh, it went. It went long. Fifteen Not love. Didn't get there. Mr. Rublev yeah. has That's two challenges remaining. That's the way wants to make these points happen. It seems like. Rinka. Join the tennis. What Rublev wants to do is he wants to get off the tree, get some time out of that backhand corner. Is Rinka plays at least Mertens. That's tonight. Winner there gets Serena Williams. She's had to go three sets, Serena, the last three more. rounds. Did it against Lynn Stevens and then Maria Sakari and today against Pedronkova. Again, good deep backhand, setting up the offensive forehand. That's the play he wants. Big to the backhand. Give me a little bit of time. Let me hurt Don't you with your hand and make you run onto a passing shot on the backhand side. Pretty complicated if that's what Rublev's playing for. I mean, that is a pretty yeah, things have to precise go well. strategy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mike Tyson say all the best game plans. 40 touches. When you get hit in the face. Until you get hit. That's right. Does let Medvedev, Dominic team, uh, when Rublev lets Medvedev play too much with the forehand side when he's set up, he, he certainly does lose nice. control of those points quite consistently. Dominic team, the second seed here, takes on Alex Dino, Australia, the 21st seed. That's tonight. Rublev has calmed down. Yeah, it's kind of a pity. One game oh. four seconds. And he won another long rally in that last game, a 21 shot rally. There's good shot tolerance from the younger Russian. The last time a man younger than 25 won a major was here back in 2009. Twenty-one-year-old Juan Martín de Potro. Dominic Team is twenty-seven. He's looking for his first. So with these two. Two guys as tall as Medvedev. Sixteen six have won majors. Juan Martin here, and Marin Cilic in 2014, also 6'6", also here in New York. Oh. I wonder why 
sure that's that's the case here. Don't you know? Yeah. I can see grass. You could make an argument. The balls bounce lower, so it's not going to be favorable to a guy who's that tall. The clay court, you know, obviously that valuable. You've got Nadal. Enough said. And he's been <laughs> just taking them all, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. And then I, I'm curious as to why there hasn't been a taller guy winning the Australian Open. Yeah, with that higher plays, bounce. Yeah, higher bounce. And it, and, it, and it can play quick, like the U.S. Open. Oh. 40 love. He's re cranking. Okay, Medvedev. Well, Medvedev's doing that well, isn't he? New please. Ace number seven for him. Medvedev leads by two games to one, second sets. And by one set to love. Joe Kravis did that match. Yeah. Yeah. Talked to her before the match started. She says, oh, the one thing that could be a problem for Karankova, a lot of things, but the forehand. And Joe was right. You know, in the first set, the forehand was great. And as the match went on, she had less and less confidence. <laughs> Those balls started sitting up for Serena. And I think that contributed to how many winners Serena had in that match. <laughs> Third H for Rublev. On top of those serves, huh? That's six six. <laughs> you know, that's what we're talking about. I, I retract my question. Game. Rublev. Another race. Two games over. Second set. Moves it around the box too, doesn't he? It's his fourth. Medvedev has had eight aces. Download the U.S. Open app to cheer on your favorite players, track the latest scores, stats, match highlights, player news, and more. Available in the App Store and Google Play Store. USOpen.org. Back there, I'm sure you wouldn't mind my sweaty kinesio tape. It's been on my thigh for a set and a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be clammy. Man, I, I love seeing those combos. The wide serve, move the, edge, the next ball early, rush your opponent to the other side. High quality serving points. That is not as easy as it looks. Yeah, it's just frustrating. I mean, if, if you're Rublev, that's just frustrating. How good of a shot do I have to hit? You know, and this is what Rublev needs to do to Medvedev. Okay, Medvedev. 
A lot hole for Andre Medvedev. Medvedev leads by three games to two. Second set and by one set to love. Third seed up a set. Time. You know, obviously, Medvedev Love has a team. ton of opportunities to come forward and take one of those balls in the air, and finish off that point quicker. Rublev, he was allowing Rublev to prolong those points a little bit more. I don't advise it, but there was one player in the past that took it on purpose. Who are you talking about? Andre Agassi would intentionally Coutinho. not come forward. I heard him speak about this, actually. He would intentionally not come forward to finish off points quicker because he not only wanted to win, he wanted to break you down because he felt like the more he could make you run, yeah the better his chances went as the match went on, the more tired he'd be. And it makes sense, right? Obviously, it worked. You know, we, we saw him play quite a bit. And when you come in to finish off all, he finishes those points quick. I'll tell you who also truly enjoyed torturing his opponents 15, by taking their legs out instead of going for winners, Yvonne Lend. He took great pride in that, too. These are despicable people we're discussing. <laughs> Striking. I interviewed Yvonne Lendl after an early round match. One of 15, the 14. Australian Open T ended up winning. And he had dropped the opening set. And I said to him, were you at all worried? You know, because he didn't play, he wasn't playing such a good guy. And he said, no, I played exactly, I did exactly what I wanted to do <laughs> in the first set. And I knew he had nothing for the next three. Cool. Of course, I love him. To, it's tough to see how Med. Uh, sorry, it's, I will. Yeah, I'll say Medvedev that. Medvedev leads by four games to two. Second set right now. I mean, he's taking Rublev's best stuff. Rublev is not consistently able to get ahead in the points. He's not able to clean up the points. And then as soon as Medvedev decides to impose himself to play offense off of his racket, it's too much for Rublev. He's kind of winning off of both sides.
marketing in love. able to continue to improve and continue to play this well offensively and defensively, we may actually be seeing something pretty special. We may be seeing another special player come along who is goes through stretches of being impossible to beat. You know, because to get to this level, it's really hard to be good at everything. You kind of have to specialize. So when you have a player like Djokovic or Medvedev um, who's good at offense and defense, that that's different. Dubliv still hasn't earned a break point against Medvedev, sir. No! Fourteen, fifteen. Code violation. Oh, Craig, you have to back. Warning, yeah. Mr. Rublev. Enjoyed that reaction, getting some encouragement that uh, he's doing all the right things out there. Because of your mistake, now I'm going to get fined. And Kyoto Vong was clarifying, say, look, we'll watch the video, and if nothing was said, then there's yeah. no fine. Yeah, after the match, they'll have a couple of whiskeys, <laughs> blow the suds off a few, watch the replay. That, what are the odds that's going to happen? Yeah, I doubt that's going to happen. But if it comes to $10,000 or something like that for Rublev, he will. He's not going to get fined that much for an audible, is he? On TV, Grand Slam. Oh, really? Oh, for sure. It's a lot. 10,000 clams? I'm not sure of the number, but it's a lot. Sadly, I had experience in that department. <laughs> I remember calling your matches. Yeah. 40 love. Five games to three, second set. Rublev's got to be racking his brain away to, to impose his game on Medvedev. Just everything he's trying, it seems like it's just slipping away little bit by little bit. 15 left. So is Rublev going to get quieter now? Definitely not. We're out here to battle. Okay. We're out here to fight. Yeah. That's how he fights.
So 30, uh, I'm, I'm Fernando Vicente. I'm coaching Rublev. Okay. Here's what we got to work on against a quality defender like Medvedev. When you open up the court, you got to be looking to cut off the angles. You can't just move side to side. You take yourself out of position and you give your opponent more time. Like if you think about Federer, what he does so well is he cuts off the angles when balls are going across his body. It puts you in a position to come forward. So you're about cutting into the court. Yeah, exactly. Like, like if, if, we're, if you're looking at the baseline, like a V, you know, if that ball's coming across you, you, you take it at an angle. You don't run to the side. Whoa! That's good. 14. Oh, really starting to mope around now. If he says that all he did was scream, alert viewer, Reem A, from Egypt. Says Serena screams all the time. <laughs> she doesn't get called for screaming. Thank you, alert viewer. What? Game in second sets. And there goes the second death. set in a hurry. By six games to three. First set took a little over Medvedev an hour. That one was two a little over half an hour. Fifteen love. Dino. That looked a little sluggish from Rublev. I'm not sure that ball was a good ball. I'm not sure it was that good. And I don't think Rublev Mr. Medvedev is challenging a call on the left center service line. The ball was good hit. The serve was in. 30-15. East number five for Andre Rublev. <laughs> She's got a lot of Thirty off. In his repertoire. Mr. Medvedev has two challenges remaining. I think Rublev should have been in on that serve. With how far 40, back Medvedev was, how far wide Rublev hit that serve, he could have gotten in way earlier. You know, just watching this match, I'd love to see a healthy, informed Federer play a Medvedev. You know, Federer with such good skill to come forward. So much experience, able to open up the court, take the ball early, make the opponent hit tough passing shots. That would be fascinating. First game, third set. That's a much, a much nicer shot from Rublev. Maybe taking a little bit of pace off, but creating that huge angle. Again, I can't stress it enough. When somebody is... So when I was serving against people, and I, I, had, I had a pretty quick serve, when they would stand at the fence to return, what did that take away? That took away all my power because by the by the time the ball got to them, it was it was slow. So then I had to rely on my accuracy. That's one of the biggest problems when you're returning against Isner. 
not only does he hit it 135 plus, but he can hit the spots. So you're, you're faced with a choice. Do I want to be at the fence to take his power away, but then he's going to have these huge angles on me? Or am I going to take the angles away by stepping up close to the baseline, but now I've got 135 plus coming at my face? <laughs> And that's the deal when you're playing against Is somebody. there another choice? There isn't. You just <laughs> w walk to the other side. That's huh. that's as good as it gets. Just the head-to-head -head for Medvedev and Roger. Federer's beaten him all the time enough. they play, but you think this, this brand of Medvedev is different? I think it's good, but... Again, like I said, that's why I kind of asked that question is, is I think that the way to beat Medvedev is you can't just, you know, rip from the baseline. You've got to be using the angles, pulling them off the line, so far back, coming into the net, getting a great position, then knocking off volleys. And I'm just thinking, well, nobody does that better than Federer. So you saying that he's got a three love head to head makes sense to me. Mr. Rublev is challenging the call on the left Even near sideline. How many opportunities the ball scored in. have to come forward in that point? He had a ton. Medvedev was just on a string, on a string, but he, like you said, Mary, he moves so well that he just prolongs the point. Hawkeye have confirmed the ball was in. 40 love. Mr. Rublev has two challenges remaining. Great combo from the good. Very well done. And I guarantee left. you, I would bet a lot of money that if Rublev did not come forward and Medvedev see that heat, there's no way he would have missed that ball, missed that running back in. Ripping down the line is not the answer. When you're trying to get somebody out in the middle of the court, ripping down the line is not, not the answer because it only takes one, maybe two steps from the center of the court to cover that, even a perfect shot if you're Medvedev. If you hit a good sharp angle, it takes four and then some. Look at that. You know, I'm, so I serve volley and everybody asks me, oh, serve volley tennis, is, is it a thing? For the most part, I say no. It's not a thing. I bet I, I, there are exceptions. I think serving wide on the do side, definitely a thing. But I also have a caveat to say, I think finishing points up at net, like Federer does, like Djokovic does, like Nadal does, that is modern tennis. Hitting a big ball wide, opening up the court, coming in and finishing off the ball. That, I think that's the modern way to come to the net. And I think the best players do it all the time. Forty, 
I have propounded a theory. 40-30. Two-handed backhand to wipe out certain volley tennis. Okay. You can't you can't argue that there's more of them, and you can't argue that certain volley tennis has gone by the wayside. So there is a correlation there. I'm just saying it used to be you aim into a guy's backhand or a woman's backhand. You're going to get a slight return. You, yeah. You just pop it off the net. You know, one of the things that I had a tough time dealing with was the angle pass. When before players could hit this much spin, the angle passing shot had to go slow, so you could take multiple steps over there. Now, you they can rip it. That's right. Game. Rublev. So Rublev gets... New balls, balls. please. The error and takes the game. Rublev leads by two games to one. Third He's sets. Deep trouble. Down two Medvedev sets. Medvedev by two sets to love. Fifteen all. Well, watching these two play, not just this match, but in the uh, previous rounds, we, we consider kind of, or I do, I consider Rublev the more offensive player and Medvedev the more defensive player. But interestingly enough, I think I feel like on average Medvedev hits a better quality ball, faster ball. Because offense just isn't 15, how big you hit the ball. Offense certainly is part of that, right, is, is your ball quality. Another part of that is accuracy. How close to the sidelines are you willing to go, willing to risk? And how early are you able to take the ball? Like, if you think of Federer, he does all those things. He's very accurate. He hits the ball great quality, and he takes it early. I rushed to mention that... In this match, after two sets in a bit, 30. 15 winners from Rublev, 32 from Medvedev. Exactly. And that's the thing is, in this match, Rublev has had the power. You know, he's had plenty of ball quality. His accuracy has been good at times. But, but that's nuts. No, that exactly. And that's that's getting 40, accurate, 30. good ball quality and taking the ball early, cutting away time from your opponent. I, I keep harping on this with Rublev. I think that the next level of his evolution as an offensive player is learning how to take the ball earlier when the opponent's out of the court. Mr. Rublev is challenging a call on the right baseline. The ball's got in. But there's a time to take the ball early, Mary, and there's a time not. Like, if you're playing me, and you're hurting me, and I'm in the middle of the court, there's no need to take time away. I'm Hawkeye where I want to have be confirmed defensively. The but ball on the right as baseline you take was me outside in. the alleys. If you take me wide, now Game. is the time. All Medvedev. I want is more time for me to recover back to my my happy place in the middle of the court. So that's the time to take the ball. Two games all. Third away sets. From. And that's Mr. not. Mr. Rublev has one game. challenge I'm remaining. Right. Confirmed. USOpen.org will catch you up on what's happened. <laughs> The whole tournament and today. Wait, please. Pedankova lost to Serena in three sets. But that effort she made, she hadn't played since 15, 2017, her first tournament back. She won all those rounds. She went from no ranking, a protected ranking, a motherhood ranking, to she'll land around 155 now after one tournament oh! from no ranking. That's pretty good. Yeah, and it gives her some courage to use that protected ranking a little bit more often, with more freedom. Sometimes when you're coming back from injury, you get that protected ranking. But Fifteen off. It's not, but uh, you know, from her extended leave, you kind of protect. The, the usage, because it's not unlimited. You only get a certain amount Correct. of times you get to the protected ranking, so use them for bigger tournaments. Now I think she can use them a little bit more freely. Let's for service. Confident she's playing well. 
She doesn't have to defend any major points for a year. That's a big deal. Mr. Medvedev is challenging the call on the right far side line. The ball scored out. We caught it. Hawkeye have confirmed the call on the right far side line was in. Replay the point. Good scrambling. 13. Medvedev not really getting Rublev really out of the middle of the court makes you have to hit a perfect volley, but again, he was going to win that point a fair amount. 14. 15. Awesome. Mary gave you a little positive energy there. Yeah. Game. Rublev. Have a good looking serve. Rublev leads by three games to two. Third set. set Medvedev by two sets to left. It's all about the silver lining for Rublev. He has not played a bad match. Medvedev has played flawless. 15 love. I feel like if Medvedev's level drops just a little bit, Rublev is playing well enough to take this third set. But he, he's going to need Medvedev's level to drop. Their best. Medvedev is just too good. No. Defense is too solid. Offense is too consistent. Serve is too big. Thirty fifteen. This is 11 and 12 in this game. Forty fifteen. Game. <laughs> Medvedev. Okay. Three games all, third set. Just don't, I'm not sure his level will drop. <laughs> it hasn't, right? Not dropped a set yet, breaking guys at will, holding. He's got broken one time this whole tournament so far. Rublev hasn't had any looks to break him this tournament, this match. Wait, please. Love the team. Fifteen all. Mr. Medvedev is challenging the call right far side line. The ball's going in. Out. Oh, Medvedev's right. Second serve. Hey. 
Fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. is testing out the offense a little bit this game, not choosing to play prolonged points. Okay, Rublev. Rublev leads by four games to three, third sets. Medvedev by two sets to love. If Andre Rublev wants to cut into this set, he's got to. He's got to do it right around now. Again, he hasn't had a chance to break Medvedev yet. Over two hours. 15 minutes. 13 mile an hour second serve. <laughs> he is feeling really good out there, Medvedev. Even after the last game, he made a lot of mistakes. Trying to play aggressive right back at it. Touch you. Second service. Oh! It's crazy how big Medvedev is going for those second serves. It's crazy how big he's going for every ground stroke right now. Yes. Interesting, interesting couple of games from Medvedev. I, I would say if I'm Vicente, if I'm Rublev, that might give me a little bit of hope. I mean, it's different, right, than what we've seen. He, he's changing up the game. He's just blasting now. Maybe he's going to give me some free points, which he has enough. been. Maybe that might happen in a breaker if I can get it there. Potentially get up 5 2, 6 3. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's what happened in the opening set. I'm curious as to why Medvedev has made this change. Obviously, he's just he's started keeping the points short. Is it just because he wants to? He's bored out there. Wants to do something different. Is he tired? Done with this guy? <laughs> Don't know. I think at this stage he probably feels he could beat Rublev any way he wants. I agree.
13, 15. It's not going to take much, so I'm telling you, Rublev is still playing a high quality brand of tennis. I mean, Rublev's set is six winners, four unforced errors. Very clean. 14. Hold from Andre Rublev. Rublev leads by five games to four. Still on third serve sets. in his third set. Medvedev by two, two sets, sets to love. love for Medvedev. Fifty love. And that's one of the massive things about. Being able to win points on your own racket, being able to win points through aggressive tennis, accurate tennis, is you don't have to move. Let's you get some counter punchers out there like uh, Hewitt, you know, Chang, Schwartzman, players like that. As soon as as soon as they lose half a step, that match is gone. Rublev just has to remain calm here. He's got to know, he's got to see that uh, Medvedev's body is, is letting him down, and he's going to go for a lot now, which he has been the last handful of games. Game. Met for death. Five games on. Third set. Smell like his goodies. Different ways to get electrolytes and potassium into the muscles. Fifteen love. Looks like Medvedev's just playing for this tiebreaker. Just going for broke now every turn. Thirty love. Forty love. Rublev leads by six games to five. Let's see it. if Medvedev gets treated on this trade. Well. Fifteen love. Medvedev, two changeovers ago, treated for his shoulder. Got his legs massaged on that last changeover. Fifteen love. And your job as Rublev, your job as a player, playing against somebody who's cramping like this, trying to keep the points short, there's not much you can do. You can't prevent Medvedev from going for winners. That's not what you can do. But you can make him run. You can make him play. ball down the middle of the court right now from Rublev is a mistake. Thirty love. And, and if Medvedev wasn't cramping, I wouldn't say that. You know, when you're returning, make the guy play. That's first and foremost, give yourself big margins. But now there's so much reward to going wide. He may not even run for it. So, so getting love. the ball down the middle is exactly what Medvedev wants. And it's always a good thing to get into a habit of whatever your opponent wants, you should be giving that to him. 
game, Medvedev. Six games all. Another shootout. Third set tiebreak. Both players receive an additional shoot. challenge. Medvedev tries to muster up some energy to play a couple of solid points. Or if he's just going to roll the dice and see if he can strike seven big shots to win this match. Finalist Medvedev trying to hang on for dear life. <laughs> Mr. Rublev is challenging a call on the service line. The ball is caught in. Mr. Rublev is challenging the call on the right far side line. Rublev doesn't think that in. was out either. It's a good omen. I guess considering the last challenge that he made. He was right. Just Hawkeye have line. confirmed Just the call was in. 2-1 Medvedev. Mr. Medvedev is challenging a call on the left center service line. The ball is caught in. Yeah. Hawkeye confirmed that the ball is in. Two of them. Mr. Medvedev has two challenges remaining. Cramping, huh? Yeah, I mean, typically what I see when a player a player can recover in the match during you know when they've suffered from cramping, I've seen it happen many, many times. <laughs> and this is typically typically this scenario. Three. These points are not physically taxing at all. They're maximum of one shot. Like this is this is playing as well into Medvedev's hands as it can be, considering how aggressive he's playing, how risky he's playing. Just going big on every shot. How much pressure is Rublev feeling right now? I mean, he's got to feel like, man, this match could be mine if we can just make this into a fourth set. Just in time. There's some exciting action in this third set breaker. Four three. 
Medvedev. Mika Azarenka plays tonight against Elise Mertens. Azarenka unseated Mertens 16. That lean. 5'3, oh. Medvedev. 74 mile an hour second serve, just inviting Medvedev to take it early. Again, what does an aggressive player want? Nice, slow, weak second serve will do. Thank you very much. Five four Medvedev. Out the tough volley, missed that one. Five oh, What an unbelievably bad pass <laughs> from Rublev. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can't believe Rublev came away with winning that point. Six five. Medvedev. Match point as well. with him a year ago. Taylor, my respect for him, continues to grow. He is impressive. We're about to see a lot more. 